What's up guys? So as you can see, we are going to build a DIY portable 2.1 channel Bluetooth speaker. And it's going to have a fully 3D printed enclosure. So starting off, I pulled out a six inch sub from my old gaming you know, sound system. And that allowed us to use this 30 watt sub along with the face plates and the little mesh front to our sub. Uh, that'll give it a really nice clean look once you guys actually see the design. And then we also have two four inch Dayton Audio full range drivers. They are the RS100-4s uh, to actually power, you know, all of the electronics going to our driver and our sub. We have a Bluetooth 5.0 2.1 channel amp that I got on Parts Express. It kind of has all the capabilities that I was looking for. You have an aux input. You also have all of the poten you also have all of the potentiometer control in order to do things like your full master volume, treble, bass, and all of like the EQ features that we would want in our amp. And then we are using a 12 volt 3 amp 6,000 milliamp hour battery in order to power this whole thing. So theoretically, we only have a max of 36 watts. It won't be a crazy amount of power, but our sub is only 30 watts and our two drivers kind of have a sustained uh, output of around 30 watts each. Either way, we're not gonna fully utilize the capability of all of the components, but either way, we should see some really good sound out of this speaker once it's all put together. But before we do that, let's first take a look at the design process, how I went about actually configuring and designing what I wanted the speaker to look like and what it took to actually design in our CAD software, go through maybe a couple of 3D prints. And then of course, I will come back and we will build this thing. Should be a pretty simple process. Hopefully everything should fit together pretty well. Uh, if not, of course, we'll work our way through it. And then at the end, we will definitely do a sound test. That way you guys can actually get a feel for how this thing sounds. We'll see how bassy it is with the sub and the two full range drivers inside of our 3D printed enclosure. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. So let's walk through the design. So as you guys can see, we're starting off with the subwoofer box first. Now we're adding in a port and we're gonna try to actually add some rails on the side of this box so that the two side pieces for the two drivers can slide right onto the box. So now we've pulled off our faceplate and we're designing our right side driver uh, enclosure and faceplate as well. And this will just be duplicated over on the left side just for symmet symmetry and everything else. We're just gonna check our battery fit as well as some of the holes on uh, the back of the actual case for our amplifier and all of the knobs and all of the EQ settings that we can do with our, uh, our Bluetooth amp. Um, we also just are, are going to check all of the clearances, all the fit, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now I'm a little bit concerned about the rails on both the sub uh, enclosure as well as the two side enclosures, mainly in case there's too much interference and they don't slide together very well. But overall, we shouldn't see too many issues with this design. I think it should hold up really, really well. It's going to be a super big print. It's almost 20 inches by eight inches tall by six inches deep. So it will be a quite a big speaker, almost boombox size-ish, but I really like the design features and the symmetry of this enclosure. But let's jump into the build now. So first we're just gonna start off by drilling out some of our 3D printed holes. The 3D printer isn't gonna do the exact circles the way we need them, but overall it didn't do a terrible job. So we're just drilling out all of the amp uh, holes for all of our uh, volume adjustments, uh, as well as our uh, power hole and our aux jack hole. So now we're just going to test fit the amp, make sure everything is clearing good. Now the, the back wall is a little thick, so those knobs barely squeeze through, but they're still adjustable with the tips of your finger, not too bad. So now we're just going to test fit the battery as well. We're going to hot glue this into the case. I found that hot glue with the 3D prints works extremely well to hold stuff in there nice and firmly. So that battery is not going anywhere. So now let's jump over and attempt to get our side panels on here. Now this didn't end up going super well, uh, but we were able to actually shave off quite a bit of those rails and get those in place with some hot glue and some screws. Everything is stuck together now really, really well. So we have our power cord in there now, and now we're just getting the aux cable installed. 
that is perfect easy to do uh next step is to screw in the drivers to the faceplate run the wires through the uh pre-drilled and 3d printed holes that go from the side enclosure over to the main enclosure with the sub um, and that will just allow us to actually input the wires into the amp but before we do that we're just going to put down some of this weather stripping tape it should allow us to get a really nice seal between the faceplate and the actual back box that way there's no air seepage or anything like that and this driver is producing at its best quality sound but there we go we got the wires in there through into the sub box so now we can just screw our faceplate on to our enclosure make it really really nice and clean those screws are actually going to sink down into the faceplate and kind of be flush with the front of our enclosure so now we can just move on to the other side do the exact same step so we'll get the driver over there and run the wires into the sub enclosure same thing with our weather stripping just get that really really nice seal um, and we will of course attach the wires to the amplifier getting everything secured and good to go so same thing we'll get the faceplate screwed down tightened down and ready to go and final step is of course the big sub the six inch sub so we'll get this connected to our faceplate first we'll attach the wires to the amp now all of the wiring is pretty much done and all the wiring into the amp is actually just screw on so it's super super easy now we're just going to screw down our faceplate to the back of our enclosure get it all set up and final step is to use that old faceplate from the sub box screw it on here really really nice looking design get the mesh front on there and this thing is looking perfect so here we go this is what it looks like in its final state where it's going to be used outside uh, in the grass portable speaker battery powered should be a blast to use outside on some nice days but let's take a listen to how it sounds Thank <laughs> you. 